Hello everyone. Today we will be reviewing an example project to model a project in Rhino for architecture in the Rhino for architecture series. This will be a residential commercial project and we will start with a known site plan that could include civil CAD topography and imagery that could be Google imagery to scale uh, if you're in a firm or a studio. Uh, that can be either one of those. You'll start with a known footprint. Uh, from there, you can begin creating relevant site context using the commands here. Uh, there are commands posted in the top left corner for reference of which commands are being used, and there are advice given in the top right corner that will pop up from time to time. So you can use the information on your end to create the known context and create this in the plan views and the elevation views in Rhino, which is fantastic for creating um, for creating elements in Rhino for architecture. So continue to create this information. Continue to use the commands here to create roads, to create parking. You can place them on the relevant layers on the right. I have other videos that go more and more into this information to basic commands. You can see those uh, in the other playlist. You can continue to create the site information you see necessary. For example, here in a multi-family or residential commercial project, approximately anywhere from 150 to 200,000 square feet, anywhere from 150 to 200 units. It's very common to have a drive-through port crochet or drive through canopy here with some parking immediately available at the front. And you can continue to place parking around the perimeters you see fit. A helpful bit about Rhino that other programs like SketchUp conceptual modeling cannot do is you have the ability to create annotations, dimensions, and other information immediately available on the screen as you model. Very helpful for keeping things in reference. You can assign them to the correct layers and you can turn them on and off. And this is very handy for keeping your information straight and for organizing your building uh, from a unit standpoint and a grid standpoint and a layout standpoint. That's not to say other programs can have this information available in the model space, but Rhino seems to be a little bit more technically accurate and easier to navigate in that world. So once creating your site context and getting the footprint, you can begin by creating the generic massing of the building. Here you will see an example of creating solid forms. And those solid forms can, whether they're on an angle or an orthogonal layout, it's important to create the views that you need. Uh, for example, here you will see an elevation view being created and locked and renamed. So you can easily click on the tabs in the bottom left. Very, very helpful, quick reference guide for creating and laying out elements on your building as you continue to model. Once your views are set up, you can then continue to uh, create the blocks that will be the basic floor plates of your building. Blocks act like components in SketchUp in the sense that if you change one, they'll all change in continuity. This is extremely helpful for an example where you have four levels in this particular building example. If you make a block for levels two through four, all of the blocks will act the same in that if you have window placements or materials applied to them, you can change one and it'll quickly update the rest, which is very typical in residential buildings where the layout will be the same up the building for efficiency and for ease of construction. So you can see here as we create our blocks for that exact reason, uh, before we copy it up the building, we want to make sure we scale it to the correct floor height. And then once we do that, we can make it into a block. And here we'll name it uh, the building building that it is for, which is building three. In my case, I've made it a couple buildings before this for practice. And then you can, copy, you can make it a block and copy it up the building. And we named it level two through four so we don't get confused. 
and be sure to follow your layers as well. Layers can be used in a multitude of ways in Rhino, just like they can in SketchUp as well. Uh, the great thing about Rhino is the ability, ability to subdivide them and create uh, a drop down uh, sub layers, if you will, to better organize your project. So if you have different design options, you can use layers or you can use uh, different uh, components to mix and match. Uh, there's more than one way to create different options. So you can see here we created one wing of our building and we'll continue around the building in this process. So we'll extrude our footprint in these different masses. Uh, it might be easier sometimes for other projects if you have, you can make one whole footprint, for example, and extrude it up instead of doing each wing like I'm doing here. Uh, the benefit to this is if you have a very orthogonal layout, you can imagine uh, in this slight H form that we have in plan, you can make one wing, you can mirror it around the building, and if you update one as they're all blocks, then they'll all auto update. And so for the sake of this project, and this demonstration, I use the same wing, which I'm creating now, around the other wings of the building, and that made it much easier and quicker to very quickly get a conceptual model uh, with some decent detail. And if you change one, it'll reflect around the rest of the model, making a nice, easy model if you're under a, a, a deadline or a tight timeline. Now, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but just stick with me a little bit longer. I promise it will begin to take shape and then it'll get really exciting. Um, so here's what I was talking about, about mirroring it around the building. So you can imagine if one updates, the rest will update as well. So this is really the phase in the project where you have to grind it out and just get all the legwork in. Do everything you can to create the base for your model. So we're essentially creating the generic massing for the building. Again, I'm doing it in sections like this for practices that I'm used to. If you have one whole footprint that you created with a polyline, you can imagine this might go a lot quicker if you just extruded the entire footprint up. Uh, as opposed to doing it in these wings like this. The benefit to doing these wings from experience is that if you have a client that wants to try out different massing or different designs or different materials, or different styles, you can easily swap out these different design options, if you will, these different wings. And if you were to create the whole building from one footprint, you can imagine that would be a lot more complicated. So speaking from experience, this is just one methodology of creating your building from a conceptual standpoint. You're setting yourself up for success in terms of doing different design options, whether that's things I mentioned like materials, uh, different aesthetics, different styles. Maybe it's a Victorian or a farmhouse style and you want to see a craftsman style. So you have to have a third wing that's on a different layer that you can turn on and off if you have a presentation view and you can imagine that a client would appreciate that and I'm sure your modeling staff would appreciate being able to swap that out quickly and easily. So as we continue through the project, you can continue to add context and information as you see fit. Again, we're adding sidewalks here kind of out of order from the original site, but it helps to complete the picture, so to speak, of the overall building. The next couple minutes of this video will show one methodology of creating roofs in uh, a residential, multifamily, or senior living type of project, uh, essentially using polylines to trace a profile in an elevation view. From there, you can extrude curve, creating a solid, and that will create the basic roof massing. You can assign that to a roof massing layer for ease of turning on and off portions of your model, which can make 
modeling down the road easier as well, especially if you are considering different roof pitches, whether you have a 612 roof slope or a 412 roof slope, or if you have a flat roof and you have parapets, there could be a whole other phase of modeling involved in this portion. In this next portion, I used the roof itself to extrude a roof fascia out of that element. If I had to do it over, I would consider creating its own element because it is difficult to apply a white fascia board or material to that, for example, as opposed to applying it to the entire mass. So from a predetermined footprint, we have an entry bump out here, which is very common amongst residential buildings and entrances here next to the drive through canopy, which you can see at the front here for reference. We will create bump outs with typical floors, similar to how we created the wings. Again, this could be sped up if you created one large mass to go the length or the height of the building. Um, could make this go quicker, but out of habit of creating blocks and repeatable floor plates and components, this was created using that methodology of floor to floor plates and blocks. So we're creating a block here for the level two through level four floor plate, and then we are copying it up. And from there, we can adjust them as needed. Here's an example of adding annotations to your drawings. We have a bottom view of our building here, and we added the dimension on the annotation layer. Again, these can be turned on and off in this example project. And we have decided that this seems too narrow for the entry bump out, so we're gonna increase it from 40 feet to 50 feet. And we use the gumball tool here to do that, which is that green and red arrow there in the center of the screen. It help, it's helpful to have a unit layout and a grid layout on a whole number, such as one foot, and to have your grid snap on. That will allow you to easily and quickly scale uh, your elements in one direction, and you can know for certain that it is on a whole number, which is a really nice element in Rhino. Now that we have our generic massing done, we can begin to apply materials to bring our building to life. I should note that with this video, it is assumed that there is a predecessor of knowledge to Rhino. So hopefully a lot of the commands and the navigation is fluent to you by now. Uh, this is just an example of how to go about this architecture type in Rhino as a starter. So to apply materials to blocks within blocks, you have to have the block edit button uh, or panel open, and you have to make sure that you have that block indi indicated and selected. Once you have that, you can click on any solids or any surfaces in that block, and you can apply them in the properties and material tab, as you just saw uh, right here. So that, and you'll have to play with the texture settings as well, um, indicated there and box types seem to work well, but again, you'll have to play with the specific parameters of your project to make sure you get the 
materials to show up right. You can edit the materials in the material editor to get the right scale and functionality looking and showing correctly. As previously noted, there are multiple ways to create roofs, soffits, uh, insets, and things of that nature at the roof line, uh, which can really help to make a nice shadow line or to make your building come to life with that extra level of detail. Here is one way of doing it by orienting your seaplane to that object, drawing a polyline on that object, and offsetting and using your drawing and curve commands to get the profile and the selection uh, that you need. From there, you can use commands like trim to remove the panels or information that you don't need. And then you can, again, use polylines to redraw in those surfaces. So here you can see I am creating the, the fascia, which is the front facing part of that roof to be its own element. And I'm actually drawing in an infill panel there to go to the underside of the roof, which usually in most projects that we've designed with this style host a different material for that crowning element at the front entrance there. And so you'll have to play around with the profile and the massing itself. And once you get it looking good with the correct bump outs and the right distances and dimensions, uh, you can use that uh, methodology that you've created and played with. It probably will take a few practices to really get it right and working. Uh, as you'll see throughout the video, there are times where it takes one or two tries to, to get it to work, but once it does, it, it usually works really well. Here's another example that we're creating an end wing condition. At the ends of the wings of our buildings, usually we will take the roof form and rotate it. And uh, every project is a little different. Sometimes this happens, sometimes it doesn't. You'll notice on these large residential projects, as you drive by, you'll notice the different roof forms can be a design element in and of itself. So here we have rotated it as an example. We've created a shell, which is actually Rhino Command. We have trimmed the rest of the roof element to match and terminate into that roof slope, which normally is a little bit steeper on the ends to create a more dynamic ending condition. And so we will go through the usual processes of adding a material, getting the texture to show up right, adding an infill, panel in our elevation view using polylines and drawings and surface creations. And there is one more way and one more example, one more practice methodology of creating these intricate roof forms. And this video does have a lot of information or at least takes a long time to go over the roof elements themselves, but this can sometimes be one of the more time consuming task of the design, but once it is done complete, it is worth the time and effort to get right.
once we have the basic elements, the roof, the materials, the floor plates all created, we are ready for openings, penetrations, and windows. Here we have a host of windows, which are actually blocks of a single window pane. We have a double window, we have a triple window, which on large residential projects is very, very common. Bedrooms get a double window, and living rooms and other spaces get a triple for more sunlight. So here we'll actually take those, and there is no great way to do this at the moment. There might be better advancements in the future with potential grasshopper scripts or potential uh, other commands that might be better for this. But for the purposes of this model, we actually have to place them each manually and the standard pattern is double, triple, double, triple. Um, and you can see with the added bump out elements here, which were also added for more variety and design uh, breakup of the facade, we'll actually make these windows and remember the floor plates that we've created, uh, which are all duplicates of each other in a way. This will be very, very useful at this very moment right at the end as we're starting to get the final detailing in, we can add windows to one floor plate. And you can imagine all the other floor plates and all the other wings that are copies of this will immediately reflect that. And just like that, you will have a concept model that is mostly complete. So continue to complete your model with any windows or doors any other details such as exterior balconies for residential units or canopies at common area entries at your courtyard or any other interesting elements in your design this can include many other things like landscaping with vegetation if you have components readily available uh, for landscape elements in rhino um, this can include many other things. Uh, for a final model in Rhino has a multitude of display options and layouts and graphics that can help you for presentation sake for um, your model with your, with your clients or with your professors and colleagues. And that is, uh, yeah, so this is just one way of making a full building in Rhino. And I hope you found this useful and I hope it serves you well. Thank you very much.